Paper quotes her Downing Street sources denying there's any disagreement between them. And finally, Storm Kira brought chaos for millions yesterday, but for one woman, every cloud has a silver lining. The Times reports that an artist who mudlarks on the banks of the Thames discovered a hall of clay pipes that date from the 18th century. The paper says Nicola White and a friend decided to brave the storm when they saw that the tide would be even lower than expected and found 35 clay pipes, she tells the paper. You have to remember that the last person who touched them before we found them in the mud was the person who smoked them perhaps 250 years ago. The time is now 18 minutes to 8. It has been a night of surprises at the Oscars. The very very low tide and this very 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 windy day I think it's storm Chiara but the good thing about it is that the tide has gone out for absolutely miles and you'll be glad to learn that I'm not going to subject your ears to the wind noise today and I'm not going to fight against this storm so I'm going to do a voiceover so without further ado let's go and see what the storm has washed out and left for us to find today Now the first thing I can see here is this shapeless lump of metal, there's a bit of rust there in the mud, and it looks to me like an old padlock, which hasn't moved probably very far from where it landed in the mud well over a hundred years ago. Now I love finding padlocks, you never know what you might find underneath all the mud and the rust, hopefully the name of a family or the name of a company. And now, looking amongst these rocks here, I spot a little piece of glass. Initially, it doesn't look too interesting, but then when I pick it up, you can see some lettering on it. And it is, in fact, to my great delight, I realise, a bottle seal from the 18th century with a name on it too. It looks like it could be Thomas. Ah, oh, here we go. One of my favourite finds. I never tire of finding clay pipes. And this one looks pretty intact, apart from a little bit snapped off the end there. And this is an 18th century pipe. We can tell by the shape of the bowl. And the swan, as usual, is very interested in what's going on. Ah, oh, another padlock. It seems to be the case that on a very low tide, the padlocks appear, but I'm very happy about that. I love finding padlocks. And what's this? This looks like a very old belt buckle. You can tell it's been in the river for some time. Possibly made of pewter. Now, when you have feathers and when you have hair, it's really not ideal in this wind. What have we got here? It's padlock number three. And this one's been there so long, it's covered in barnacles and it looks pretty fossilised. It's going to be a lot of fun trying to clean that one up. But hopefully underneath there will be a story. More pipes. As the tide is so low, there are a lot of pipes to find today. And I love the idea that the last person who touched them is the person who smoked them. In some cases, over 250 years ago. It really gets your imagination going. Here's another one. Most of these pipes are from the 18th century. Again, we can tell by the shape of the bowl. Very distinct shape.
and some of these have tobacco still in the bowl so I always leave the mud in until it dries and then tap it out to see if there's any tobacco underneath. You can see the white colour of this pipe where it's been exposed to the air and then the black bit which has been under the mud and that too will fade now that it's um, exposed to the air. Well there's Nick, not a hair out of place. Simon, look, I found Simon a, a nice um, cut down contender. Yeah, a nice um, oh, thank you very you much. Know, cod bottle. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. It's really cool. Well, I've had a, a pipe bonanza. Have <laughs> you? I've had a pipe bonanza as well. No way. Well, I think I found the longest I've ever found. <gasps> really? Yeah. Now it's time for a little bit of pipe comparing. Who's got the longest? Not that we're competitive in any way, of course. It's always astounding to think that these pipes have been subjected to all the tides of the river, been buffeted around, and they're still intact. And now it's time to do a little show and tell of my three padlocks here. And of course I'm hoping that there's going to be something underneath all that rust and all that mud. And here's my old Pepsi bottle to add to my collection. a nice little bag of treasures including a few coins, a buckle, some pipes and um, yeah, very exciting. All my favourite things. Excellent. Good news. And I hope you like the windswept look. <laughs> oh, you always look amazing darling. <laughs> and now it's time to head back up the ladder back to the studio where I'm going to do a roundup. So I'll see you there. Thank you very much for watching and welcome to my studio where I am here with all my finds from Sunday the 9th of February when we had a very very lower than predicted tide because of Storm Chiara or Kira, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, who was literally sucking the water out of the Thames. So um, I made sure that I set my alarm really early that morning to get down there and see what I could find and I know that a lot of mudlarks in London found some really lovely objects that day. So I'm going to start with my padlocks. Now I found three of them and as you can see here they're in a very very rusty state. So I soaked them in vinegar and molasses and I scrubbed them with wire brushes and wire wool and out of the three of them um, one of them um, has a name underneath the rust. It's always exciting finding a name on a padlock because you can find out something about the family who may have owned a shipyard or a barge building company or in this case who were from a family of Thames watermen and lightermen. This um, Thames padlock here um, has the name J Etheridge on it from Shadwell so I quickly looked up J Etheridge and I came up with a James Alexander Etheridge, who I think fits the bill. He was born in 1843. He was a Thames lighterman and waterman. And his father, William, and mother, Agnes, were also lightermen, as well as his brothers and um, one of his nephews. So um, he was also noted on one of the censuses as being a barge builder. So this padlock could have locked up one of his barges, perhaps. So a nice story. And incidentally, um, probably one of the best stories I've uncovered from a padlock is uh, the subject of one of my previous videos, the link of which I'll put up here. Um, and it's the story of George Edward Morrow, who was a shipbuilder from Limehouse and his two sons fought in World War I. So if you want to watch that story, um, I'll put it up in the screen now as a suggested video. So now I'm going to move on to my glass bottle seal, which was probably my favourite find of the day. Um, it's a very personalised bottle seal. It's got part of a name on it and part of a date. 
um, and it's got enough letters on it to guess that the name is probably Thomas Padfield um, from 17 something. But these glass bottle seals went as far back as the 17th century, right um, up until the early 19th century. And um, thank you very much to Nigel Jeffries, who's an archaeologist and glass and clay pipe specialist, amongst other things, at the Museum of London Archaeology Department. He sent me a really good link um, all about wine seals. Um, and I'm going to read you a little bit about what it says about them. And it says, the practice of marking wine bottles was popular throughout Great Britain and the British colonies into the late 19th century. When the wine bottle was fully made but the glass still hot, the glass maker attached an embossed disc of glass to the warm bottle. They were then impressed with a seal designed um, for the patron. Um, and then he goes on to say, or suggest, that labels with names are a marker of middle class people without a family crest, but who still wanted their own seal on a wine bottle. So perhaps Mr. Thomas Padfield, where has he gone, was a middle class gentleman who didn't have a family crest, but who wanted his own seal on his wine bottle. Um, I haven't managed to find out anything about him, um, but he certainly existed and uh, I love it when these names get washed up and you can just imagine that person, you can imagine Thomas Padfield with his bottle of wine, proud as punch because he's got his own name, his own family name on it. So that's my bottle seal and I've also just put out here a little selection of bottle seals that I've found um, in the past. I've got quite a nice little collection dating from pretty early to a lot later. This is another early one here and it's marked with H. Roberts and um, I've got a slightly later one here from the 19th century which belonged to a tavern in Woolwich. So they are really nice personal items to find glass bottle seals and on this database which Nigel sent me you can add your own seal if you find one um, and you can also have a look to see if the seal that you found has already been found by somebody else. So moving on around my little tray here I've got this nice um, belt buckle quite old I'd say probably 18th 19th century it looks as if it's made of pewter and it's obviously been in the water for some time um, I do have a mystery coin. I found two coins. I didn't film it because by this time my camera was just getting blown around everywhere. Um, but I've got this mystery coin. Now, I thought at first it was a, a George coin, a George III, and it could well be. It's very, very uh, faded. But there's enough on there that I think somebody will be able to identify it um, either as a George or something else. So I'm going to put a picture of it up on the screen. And if you know what it is, please let me know. So that's that. It's obviously been in the water for a long time because it's worn very, very smooth. I also found this tiny little coin here, which is a Queen Victoria 1861 threepence. Very, very pretty little coin. Um, oh, going back to bottles, I found this lovely bottleneck of a, an onion bottle here. But what's particularly lovely about it is that it's got a tiny piece of wire wrapped around the top which really makes it so personal that somebody has, um, all those years ago, back in the 1700s, wrapped a little bit of wire around the top of the neck of the bottle. It just uh, adds that special something to it, I think. Um, I've got my slightly more modern Pepsi bottle here, but I do like these, um, these sort of vintage early 1900s bottles. And now let's get on to the pipes. Now, I did find loads and loads of pipes, absolutely loads of them, um, because the tide was so low and some of them have been there for so long that they've literally got barnacles growing on them. And as you can see, Simon and I were comparing the length of our pipes. I think he may have won just by a few centimetres. Um, but most of the pipes that I found are from the um, 18th century, from the 1700s. And I do have some really good clay pipe uh, resources and so I'll put the details of those at the end of this video so that if you're interested in looking up how to date pipes then you can have a look at those resources but you can tell a lot by the shape of the bowl um, and as a rule this kind of shape is from the 1700s 
Um, now, I found a few later pipes and a couple of things. One of them um, actually still has some tobacco in it. So I'll show you that um, in a moment. It's always quite amazing when you find some tobacco in an old clay pipe because you just think, wow, it's been in there for sort of 200, 250 years. I mean, how is that possible? And I'd love to know the origin of the tobacco. So this one here um, has this little plug, uh, but underneath there is some actual tobacco from all those years ago. Um, now, I think that one of my favourite discoveries after this outing was from a humble little pipe bowl. Now, I always pick up pipe bowls um, for this reason, because sometimes you find something on them or in them that you're just not expecting. And that was the case with this one. And I didn't discover it until a couple of days later when I got home and I was just washing everything off. And as I rinsed this little clay pipe, a tiny little figure appeared on the bowl um, and it really gave me so much pleasure to see it. Uh, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen now and as you can see it looks like a little man holding a fishing rod and a fish and it's so absolutely adorable. Now I think judging by the shape that this pipe is still from the late 1700s, early 1800s um, and the thought that somebody has gone to the trouble of putting this little figure on this pipe, on this essentially disposable pipe, is so very, very special and I absolutely love it. So a beautiful little pipe bowl there. Um, apart from that, I think I've gone through everything, but I am going to check because I seem to be losing my memory. Bottle seal, clay pipes, mystery coin, padlock. Yes, I think I've been through everything. So um, I want to say thank you very much indeed for watching and thank you so much. I've got 70,000 subscribers now. How is that even possible? Uh, I'd like to um, say how very grateful I am to you all for watching my videos and commenting and um, making suggestions and helping me ID my finds. I really, really appreciate um, every comment and a uh, bit of feedback that I get and all the help I get with um, identifying the objects that I find. So thanks again for watching and I hope you have a great week ahead. Oh and I'd also like to say, I almost forgot, I also would like to say thank you very much to Niwa who um, sent me a very very good tripod which I am using today. Um, I will show you a picture of it. It's extremely good. It's got very extendable legs and it goes up very, very tall and it's extremely versatile. So it's probably one of the better, best, I would say, tripods that I've used. So thank you, Niwa, for that. Okay, well, that's it for now. I'm going to go off and clean off these pipes a little more and um, do a little bit of arranging. Have a super week and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thank you.